Hello, welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to do another review of the Venera C DCO TC3. I promise it won't be as long as the last one. If you looked at my last review on this device and you watched all the way through, congratulations. <laughs> this one, be sure, I promise. What I'm looking to do today, I thought I would check how accurate this is because when I looked at the specifications, um, I noticed that there was no um, accuracy, no percentage in terms of how accurate the voltage readings were. Um, and I happened to have a voltage reference source, so I thought I would just give it a whiz. So if you look at the specifications for the DSA, you can see there's nothing to suggest how accurate it is. So I thought I'd give it a go. So what I've done, um, let me just zoom in a bit. Okay, I've, I've set it up so that it's on times one probe into input because I'm not using a scope probe. I'm just using the direct cable with some crock clips on it. Um, I've set it to DC coupling and I've set the sensitivity to two volts because my voltage reference measures at 2.5 volts, 5 volts, 7.5 volts and 10. So it's a range that meets all. Um, and what else? Okay, I set the time base to 20 milliseconds, but that's neither here or there. And I've set the cursor or reference at the bottom of the grid. Now you can just see it there if you look carefully. So first of all, I'm just going to short the probes together and check that we've got zero, more or less, we've got an average of 0 0.03. It's, it's, it's flapping about a bit in the wind, but yeah, zero near as damn it. Here's my voltage reference device. Um, another thing I bought off of uh, AliExpress. Um, it's got a, it's powered by micro USB, um, and you can select between 2.5 volts reference, 5 volts reference, 7, 7.5 volts reference, and 10 volts. Uh, it uses the AD584M device as the voltage source um, and it's quite well rated not doesn't cost that much and I've used it to more or less calibrate my meters and do sanity checks on stuff let's see how it checks out excuse for the wobbly camera okay so now I'm, I put it at 2.5 volts let's see what we got So the average you can see is 2.45. That's not bad, actually. Let's just do the maths. Sounds like 1%. 2.45. It's... 2% by my calculation. Pretty good. Let's try 5 volts. Wow, look at that. 4.99 or 5 volts on average. Well done, Fenasi. Wow, I'm impressed. Again. Now let's go up to 7.5. I'm looking at the average reading, by the way. Uh, 7.54. Do you know what? I'm not even going to calculate that. That's good enough. Bob's your uncle. Lastly, 10 volts. 10.0. Oh. You can't grumble about that, can you? Right, the other thing I'm going to test. Do you remember, if you watched my other review, you would have seen that this device also has strangely enough a um, DC voltage input 
0 to 40 volts, so it'd be out of focus there, which is available from the tools menu. Um, so I'm going to go over to tools, select voltage. Okay, just going to put my voltage source back down to 2.5 volts. Make sure I plug it in the right one. Okay, there we are. Okay, right, so I've got my reference set to 2.5 volts and it's measuring 2.56. So look, again, that's about the same, isn't it? 2.56 at 2, 2.5%, not bad. Let's go to 5 volts. Oh, sorry about the shaky camera. Oh, 4.98, wow, superb, 7.5. Can't grumble at that. 10 volts, 9.9. I tell you what, I'm impressed. I really am impressed. Not bad at all. Right, the last thing I'm gonna do is split this thing open, uh, see what the build quality like is like, see what's on the inside. Got my favorite prying tool. All right, let's go in here. This is actually very easy to open. When I first saw this, I thought, oh my God, how am I gonna get in this without damaging it? But actually, it's really easy. Well, first thing to note, it's got a 1,500 milliamp power battery, which is kind of like uh, double-sided into place. Wow, it's very well built. Very well built. I'm, I'm super impressed. Ah, uh, you know what? Uh, I had a look at the um, the teardown video. Dave did on EV blog of the TC2 and it had a separate arm processor and it looked like a, a separate um, analog to digital converter. This one looks like it's got, I don't know, it's a, a higher scale integration chip and can you see that it looks like Something's been done, so you can't read what the device is. Let's get a closer look at that. Can you see that? It looks like an attempt has been made to hide what that device is. Hmm. It looks like it's been lasered or something. Little relay up there. These connectors here, the the ones which you know in some people's opinion are a bit wibbly wobbly i think you could just desolder these and resolder sma connectors in their place it looks like they've got the same solder footprint um oh, that is is that a transformer for the step up for the the zeno diode 32 volts generation I don't know. Let's see. It's very well built. What have we got on the bottom? Mm, okay. Oh, I see. Okay. I don't want to force this. OK, 
okay there's a, a screw down here looks like it's holding the board in remove the battery i hope that hasn't done something to memory on board and i can't start it again i guess i'll soon find out okay not much to look at on the other side really i got there's a pot there i don't know what that is for is it a capacitor i think it's a capacitor what would that be for adjusting what i don't know can see that there's the infrared receiver there for the testing remote controls. Hmm, not much to report home on there. Okay. Let's see, let you have a little look at that. Never seen focus. So there seems to be less in the way of ICs in this and in the DC2. I think there's a lot more integrated into that single IC. Yeah, I think that's definitely been lasered. Well, fair dues to Finasi. I mean, produce this device at this price, I think is quite something. Right, um, right. the only thing I, only other thing I was going to talk about is my idea for a little upgrade. I don't know if there's space. Uh, I think it's going to be a bit of a squeeze. I was thinking of putting some four millimeter sockets or banana sockets on the, on the bottom here and connecting them to um, pins one and two on this zero force component tester. Why? Well, what I thought was, wouldn't it be great if I could get my SMD tester, these prong probes with the standard four millimeter sockets on the end, plugs on the end, and then plug them in there, and then this connects through to pins one and two on there, and then I could use it, I could use the component tester to test MN, SMD devices. Well, if I manage it, maybe I'll make another little video and let you know how I've got on. I think that's all for now. If you like this video or you've heard it helpful, please, uh, I'd love to get your comments and um, please do subscribe. Until next time, bye-bye.